All right. Guess we'll get this started. Let's see if Jim Jim does show up um, or Ron. Oh, let me pull up that thing I gotta read. Okay. So actually, let me give one more minute there. Okay. So, um, all right, this is our call of order. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder, my persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting while in progress may do so by accessing the Zoom link in the agenda. Uh, we will post a record of this meeting on the East Hampton Media website as soon as we are able. The City of East Hampton would like to remind everyone to wear your masks and practice safe social distancing. Okay. Um, Who is that that's uh, just joined? Is that Jim? Yeah, that's one of ours. Yep, yep, yep. Is that Jim or Ron? I don't hear you. It's Jim. Okay. Jim. I figured so. Um, so um, no one's here for a public speak. So we can get right into it. Um, 2021 rentals and pavilion capacity. See, there was a little attachment to the packet there. With the Before we do that, Paul, oh. uh, could I make a motion to approve the minutes of the April 28th meeting? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wasn't on the agenda here. Um, we have two minutes there. So, motion for April 28th. Any corrections for that? Is there a second? I'm going to go for a double tonight. What's that? You want a second to the motion to approve the minutes from the I'll approve it. Okay. Well, I checked in. All right. Um, so since we got Jim here on the phone, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, so go around the horn. Motion to approve the April meeting minutes. Um, we'll start with you, Bob. Yeah, I approve. Great. Uh, Eric? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Jim? Jim can't. I, oh, I can't. I got to do the abs abstention. That's right. All right. All right. So minutes are approved. So I would then like to make a motion to approve the May 19th minutes, uh, the minutes from the May 19th meeting. Okay. Anybody see anything at issue with the May minutes? Okay. Is there a second? Second. You. Uh, again, we'll do a roll call vote. So, motion to approve the May meeting minutes. I'll start with you, Bob. That's right. Eric? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Jim? Yeah. No, I, I you can't. Again. I know. I said, I said yes. I have to do the <laughs> extension. Staying. All right. Stay in uh, lane, Jim. I got to say that the minutes are great. Did I You're do the really April good. meeting at all? Was I late to the April meeting? Is that, it doesn't, it, would it say that? You missed April and, and May was only like 20 minutes. So we were already done by the oh, time okay. you won. Because it says absent Ed Pesiak for April. I didn't think he was on the board. No. As far as I know, he's still on. You tell me Ed's no longer on the board. I'll make sure he's, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, he's, he's right. off. Yeah, it's, well, it's in the minutes for April, so I don't know if you want to correct it or not. But that so, still happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I can, I can move. I can just, we can have an amendment to the motion. Um, I'll so remove take it to the amount. I'll, I'll make sure I remove them from both minutes okay. and resubmit. Well, I, I think he was only on the April one, not on the May. Okay. Okay, so I'll remove them from the April. So approved as amended. 
right. Do we have to do another vote for this? Or, I don't know what's right here. Okay, we'll just go ahead. Approved as amended. All right, so now let's move on to um, 2021 rentals and pavilion capacity. So I think um, this is the capacity that you see is based on 100% capacity. Um, I think we talked before about 75% um, based on our only allowing two pavilions each day. I think we're comfortable to open to these numbers um, moving for the remainder of the year. Um, if we so choose to reverse our 75% policy that we had before, um, or amend our 75% um, policy before for pavilion size or capacity. Um, so this is what we put in there um, for tables to, so these are actual actual numbers of what could be um, put in the, for capacity for people. And then on July 10th, Folks have been all informed, but um, you know, full on July 10th reopening um, right. everything, which we've already announced and and have been taking rentals for and uh, things like that. So, John, July 10th is open. Basically, that's what we discussed last meeting. Was that was what we discussed? Yeah. So that's not that's nothing new. So that's just you know we're. July 10th, we're open to everybody. Um, there's no restrictions. There's no pavilion restrictions. There's no table restrictions. There's nothing. It's July 10th. We're, we're good to go. Um, so are you saying, if you don't mind me, so are you saying that July 10th, you're saying open the park at 100% instead of the 75 we talked about? Uh, the pavilion capacities, I'm okay. We can keep it at 75%, but I'm okay with the the 100% um, percent based on... Before we were telling people they could have 300 people at that pavilion three um, to fit that many picnic tables in there. They were very tight. Um, we've spaced them out. We reorganized and now we've set it up. So we've actually reduced capacity. So our hundred percent capacity that you read there moving forward is based on tables um, and availability. Um, so it is less than what we would advertise previously. So you're basing it on you're basing it on a reorganization of the pavilions. You're comfortable with filling the pavilions as you have them reorganized. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did you reduce any of the capacity at the other pavilions or just pavilion three? Um, actually, all of them. I mean, we used to pavilion three is reduced. Pavilion two and four, I think, were one seventy five or two hundred, and pavilion one was one fifty. Um, so we we reduced everything to actually count the number of seats that were available and space the tables out appropriately. It's not to say they couldn't come with, um, you know, their own chairs or whatever um, and sat outside or whatever, but we're, we're advertising that's our capacity for those. Um, that reorganization that we did there to space out the tables, was that um, driven by being like conscious of COVID and, uh, you know, trying to keep space between people or is that something that you would have done even regardless? We were going to do it regardless. Um, when we looked at, when we looked at capacity, um, I think our numbers were exaggerated, <laughs> what we could actually hold. Um, you know, it was like packing 10 people to a table where, you know, it's a picnic table for eight, you know, things like that. Um, so we, uh, we, we, had, we physically counted how many tables are in there and how many seats are available for those, each of those. Um, and, you know, before we had, we've moved so many tables around and tables were outside the pavilions and they were all over the place. And, you know, so you could, you know, scrunch a few next to it and, you know, you could expand, but this is, this is what's 
available inside the pavilion for seating. Okay. okay, so does anybody feel as though it might not be a good idea to open up to 100% capacity? Especially with these new numbers. Yeah, I should have gave you a comparison of what was advertised um, previously. Yeah, and and John, you're right. I mean, those those pavilions were always kind of tight. I mean, this was this was overdue anyway. Yeah. So, and like I said, it's still much less than what we would have been saying before at 100 percent capacity. Sure. It doesn't sound like there's uh, any strong opposition here. Um, no. Would anyone like to make a motion to um, allow the park to open to 100% capacity based on these uh, pavilion capacity sizes? That's I'll make a, a motion. And that's as of uh, July 10th, right? July 10th. Yeah, as of July 10th. Yeah. Open up. Um, I'll make a motion. We open 100%. Okay. Jim makes a motion. Anyone like to second this motion? I'll second it. Okay. There's Bob's no... three for three tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're right. If there's no further objection, um, then we will take a vote on the motion to open on July 10th to 100% pavilion capacity based on these new uh this new table is new capacity. Can I ask? Can I, I just want to? Why? What was the July tenth about? It was just random, or is the, not July, the July first. The July tenth was um, staffing. We or? got a letter from the mayor August first for opening because that was the original number that the state was going to go to one hundred percent based on their projections of um, vaccinated people, um, and okay. then we went from. Uh, 25 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour in 12 days. The state said, we're going to do this and this. And then they opened everything on May 29th, which was kind of a um, shocker. Um, <laughs> hit us uh, blindsided. Um, so okay. we want to right. off right. that August 1st and open up earlier. And then we were trying to be cognizant of July 4th because of what July 4th can be in the park. Um, it can be... Oh. Um, crazy yeah. busy um we still and i'll get to that in a, a little bit we're, we're still really short staff um especially on the weekends um and life and overall yeah. weekday um but i can address that shortly um so that was that was okay. our thing to yeah. get open to the public earlier um definitely not wait but try to get past the july 4th um potential craziness that 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 would uh would bring to the staff and to the facility and everything okay yeah i just I, that's I, a long-winded version of your sorry it's okay no i just didn't know if they had a dartboard <laughs> been trying to get in the town offices for a, like a year make an appointment to get in yeah well, yeah. All right, Millside Park events that we're looking at next. Well, we still need we'll still, we still need to call the vote to approve the pavilion. Oh, and I'm, okay. I'm sorry, that wasn't done yet. My and I'm, I'm I'm wondering to you, Andy, just for for clarity, that if just something about opening 100 percent with these numbers, but with 50 but with only half of the pavilions rented on the weekend, is that still what we're doing, John? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I wonder if that language should be in there just to clarify. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. So half the pavilions on the weekend. Yep. Okay. So motion to approve 100% capacity on the pavilions beginning July 10th with half the pavilions on the weekend based on the new, uh, you know, capacity table that we've got here. Okay. Um, I guess we'll do, uh, everybody's good to vote on this. Any other questions? 
All right. So then we'll start with you, Bob. I agree. Okay, Eric. Yes, I approve. Okay, Andy. Yes. And Jim. Hi. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. So we're unanimous. You like it. All right. So now, John, we can move on to Millside Park events. Okay. Great. Um. So. We talked last meeting how we were having a meeting with public safety officials, um, the mayor, myself, up at Millside to discuss um, capacity um, and allowing for um, fall events. Um, and after discussions with several police officers that were there, myself and the mayor's been to pretty much every one of those shows. We we're recommending a 1,200 person capacity for fall um, shows this year um, based on the ability to track via ticket. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, they have a system set up where they're going to, it's still free, but they're able to do ticketing or contact tracing if it's still needed at this point and to track numbers. So 1,200 is 1,200. If you don't have a ticket, you're not getting into that area. Um, we also looked at um, rearranging some of the, the things that they do there um, to, to make it easier for um, emergency access for ambulance or, or, or police or fire if anything um, uh, needs to, to get in there for equipment. So there, there'll be a... Um, a couple tweaks, but that's something we'll talk with uh, the Mill Pond Live people about. Um, but we did look at a um, wide range of not only capacity, but um, safety things that we'd like to see just tweaked a little bit. They do a really nice job, but uh, uh, a few things and moving some things here and there to, to uh, make it a little safer um, in, our, in our estimation. So, um, Then we also have um, potential of opening up um, just Millside in general on July 10th. Um, if we want to move forward with that and include it with our rentals, um, um, that is on the table because currently Millside bathroom and Millside is technically closed. Um, but I think um, getting that open on July 10th and available for rentals based on, um, you know, what, what we're looking to do with capacity and things like that and restrictions, um, still. So those two things from Mill side. So one, I guess one friendly suggestion maybe for the, the Mill Pond live folks, um, I, I'm all I'm all about the tickets, and at 1,200 is a is a very healthy capacity. Uh, I I would hope that they would be where or they would they would have some capacity that, you know, if they if they have 500 people who have reserved tickets online, and Andy and I show up that night without tickets, that we there would be some sort of way to, to enable us to go in. If we show up that night and they have 1,200 tickets that have been sold online, then then Andy and I are out of luck. But yeah. I'm just, I'm, I just want to make sure that people who might not have access to technology or who might not even be aware that they're doing ticketing online, if someone does show up and there is space for them, that they could be um, possibly be. A, I mean, I realize it's it's a it, Mill Pond is kind of like a private public thing, so it's not yeah. totally our thing. But it was just I'm just thinking I'm thinking no, about folks I, who might that's not a good have technology. Idea if, they, if what does their protocol say? They have 300 tickets available. Um, you know, are they going to, they'll probably take the same information that was asked in the ticketing process, but that's one thing I'll, I'll relate to them as well. That's because um, I do have a list right here on my computer um, for discussion points with them, because I told them they cannot, um, I told them what our thoughts were for um, our safety meeting, but I said they can't advertise or anything until you guys discuss it and approve anything moving forward. And I would let them know tomorrow what was the, um, verdict based on the commission. Cool. Okay. Yeah, all, all that sounds good to me. And that, like I said, that was just one friendly, friendly suggestion. It's on my list right now. All right. Okay. Um, 
As far as Mill Side Park events, is it only Mill Pond Live that we're talking about here? Oh, somebody else. Um, so there's there's a couple other things that um, that are smaller events. Nothing crazy, you know, um, like a dance recital or something. We've had a couple of church requests to have a, um, you know, an outdoor picnic or what have you. Um, some smaller things we've seen come across, but everything's been. Um, you know, no, Millside's not open. It's not available, um, you know, been with the plan of getting it open at some point this year to, um, we are going to limit um, bathroom hours before. It was pretty much, you know, eight to eight or eight to seven, um, you know, due to the limited staff and, and how much to get up there and back. Um, it's, it's going to be limited and and try to keep bathrooms open like Friday, Saturday, Sunday for like as long as possible. But um, Monday through Thursday, um, you know, it's going to be reduced hours. But we'll post what the hours will be um, when we can kind of coordinate um, the staff schedule to to meet the needs up there. All right, can you repeat yourself? Did you say it's only they're only going to be open Friday through Sunday, or are you saying reduced hours in general? Reduced hours in general. Okay. Are you guys getting me finally? Yeah, yes. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. We're doing any um, movie night in the park this year? Probably not. Probably not. Um, we still might, but. At this point, we're just trying to get camp open and get everything else going. And then if we can um, maybe have one in, in the, um, you know, late August or um, we'll try to get something. But um, it's just crazy at the office. I'm not going to throw anything more at Sam or any other of the staff until we can handle what we have. Um, hmm. And right now it's really, really, really busy. Pumpkin fest. We're hoping. We talked about that today. I told her first couple of weeks in July, we're going to discuss that. Okay. Mm. All right. So do we need to, to vote on anything to let you do the Millside Park? I think you should vote on um, reopening Millside Park with a 1,200-person um, capacity for events, providing they're able to track um, – the entrance not only numbers but a way of contact tracing for such a large event i think we still need to um, have that ability so what would be the date that we would be starting um july 10th opening up the mill side all right so, so we're not andy, until september andy you throw that date in there and exactly what john said i'll make that motion <laughs> okay so, Eric, you're making a motion to open Millside to 1,200 persons. Uh, uh, beginning so the contract. Do, Jim, are you I, I, Can I read it I just to make sure I got it right? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted right, to find uh, out about motion made by Motion made by Eric to open Millside Pond for, for events 1200 with a 1,200 person capacity based on ticketing and contract contact tracing on July 10th um, and during regular um, open hours, reduce bathroom with, hours, reduced, with reduced bathroom hours as, as, as um, during op regular opening hour or operational hours. Well, I'm, uh, yeah. I mean, on the, I'm, I'm, I'm for the, you know, watching the numbers there, but I'm not for the contact tracing. So I don't know if that's going to be in there. I'll have to go against it, but I'm okay with numbers, the sales and all that, but watching how many people count, count people coming in, but who's, who's in charge of contact tracing and all that. I don't know. The renters. I'd be a no. Yeah, I'm, uh, so we'd have to trust them. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Okay. 
That's putting the responsibility on them, so I don't know. It, yes, it puts the responsibility on them. Just like soccer is in charge of it, baseball, everybody's in charge of their own keeping track of contact tracing. Did they have uh, and, uh, any pushback? And this is only for large events. I mean, if you're having a, a picnic for 15 people, um, you know, I think we're pretty much over with contact tracing. This is for large events um, where there's going to be large groups gathering. Yeah, I mean, um, and, and they know that's part of the deal. They're well, they're more than prepared for it. Because I don't even think Fenway Park is doing contact tracing. Yeah, if you bought a ticket, they know who. You gotta, you gotta. If you bought a ticket, they they have your information. They don't know who's with me. Yeah. Yeah, but you're responsible. Yeah. I'll know Saturday night when I go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Did they? Uh, did the Mill Pond folk have any issue with contract contact tracing? No, they're 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 full on planning on doing it. That's why they're doing it the ticketing. They're, they they because they're doing other events in other other towns and other communities. And yeah, for this year they understand. And actually, I don't even care about contact tracing after this year. I think it's just a great idea to have that ticketing. That way you can control the flow of people coming to the event. Where you're not going to have yeah, that's a good three or four thousand yeah, parts. Okay. Um, so it sounds like I mean, when we say contact tracing, what you mean is we're keeping taking down the personal, you know, name or contact information of each person who attends the event, and that's happening because or by way that they're purchasing a ticket. Yes. And then if there were to be an outbreak you know, theoretically at one of these events, you would be able to contact people who are there and say, just so you know, there was an outbreak at this event. We want to give you a heads up. If you're feeling ill, you might, might want to get tested. If you want to be, you know, just as a precaution, get tested anyway. But just so you know, that's what happened. Um, yeah. Is there, if it's anything different than that, I mean, is, is that how you understand it, Jim? Yeah, well, uh, yeah I, I just think that... <laughs> I mean, if we're open, we're open. I mean, that's it, everything is is. Uh, and if you're counting the people, I'm I'm all for that, but but not for the tracing. I don't know. I'd rather not. I mean, if we're 100 percent capacity and open is open, <laughs> like it was. Do we have I mean, bookings already for there? No. Well, we, we will. We will have the Mill Pond Live. I think the difference is for something like this is you're getting 1,200 people that don't know each other um, into one area compared to where a pavilion, you're inviting your guests. You know who's there, and they're going to know who came and who went. If someone has COVID, if they were at the party, they're going to tell whoever ran it. You know, it's, it's, it's a little different than, um, you know, inviting – what, you know, 1,200 people who don't know if they're vaccinated yeah. or, or whatever, you know, they don't know what they're bringing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm they're not going to do it at the Big E. With, with them doing that, and they're very comfortable providing that service. Um, they understand that they, they actually want to do that because they're doing it at other facilities. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, they're bringing a COVID certificate? They don't have to, no. No. Because the big the big E's wide open this year, hundred percent. I mean, they're the not, the alternative doing... would be to deny them the opportunity to hold an event at all. As far as I understand, right? Are, I mean, we, it... are we making them do the tracing? Are we requiring them to do the tracing? Well, it sounds like they're doing it as a matter of process. They're doing it as a matter of process. But I think, I think if someone else rolls in and says, "I want to have a concert with fifteen hundred, two thousand, or twelve hundred people," um, I think it's a good practice for this year. Yeah, and 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 Jim, to be honest with you, like, so if if COVID, if if this is a year from now, and COVID isn't a thing at all, and hasn't been a thing for over a year, I'm with you hundred percent. But I feel like we're still in, you know, quote unquote, an extraordinary time. 
let's stick the landing on this. And, you know, I mean, and you go to Fenway there. I mean, there is contact tracing and there always has been contact tracing. If, if John has his tickets, and I take his ticket and I go get drunk and get thrown out of the game and throw things on the field. He loses his season's ticket, even though he's not there. They can trace that. They could trace the seat back to yes. back to him. So this is just one small little precaution, you know, we're at the cross fingers, hopefully end of the pandemic. I think it's, I think it creates no more work for the department. And I mean, if the mill, if the mill pond live folks are willing to do it, let's do it. And then let's revisit it in a year. Yeah, and, and truthfully, if we come up in August, at the end of August, and say, you know what, we've really gotten to everything and everything looks good, you know, we you don't worry about the contact tracing. They'll probably yeah. already have it done. But but I think it's a, they're they're fully prepared to do it, and I think why if they're fully prepared to do it, why wouldn't we ask them to do it? Mm -hmm. All right. Are we going to fix the roof first before we let anybody in there? Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't been over there in a while to look at the roof. Actually, I was over there, but I didn't even notice it. How bad is it? No. Well, actually, I've had people complaining to me about it, but I, I actually didn't see it myself, but I've had several people tell me about it. Yeah, I was actually, we had our meeting underneath the pavilion. And I didn't notice that the roof was bad, so I, I'd have to look to really? see. Yeah, but I wasn't up on the top or anything. I mean, I'd have to double check. Okay. So I think there's a motion on the table without a second, I think is where we were, where we were at process-wise. Yes. Um, so this has been some time, Andy. Will you read back that motion? Wow, okay. Um, motion is to, allow, to reopen uh, on July 10th, reopen the Millside Park, 1,200 person capacity based on tickets and contract contact tracing with, uh, with uh, reduced bathroom hours during regular, we reduced bathrooms during regular hours. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll have to fix that a little bit, but that's basically it. Okay. Does anyone second this motion? I guess I'll second it. Okay. Four for four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand, Bob. <laughs> All right. Another roll call vote on this motion that I will not repeat, but Andy just said very eloquently. We'll start with you, Bob. How do you come down on this one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Eric? Yes. Andy? Yeah. Yes, sorry. Jim? Um, I'm not 100%. No, I'm going to I'm going to go with the abstention cuz I'm okay with some of it but not all of it. So, I'm going to abstain. Okay. And Ron. So, I guess uh, no yeah. whatever. Okay. So, we've got 1 2 3 4 in favor, one abstained, and the measure is approved. Okay. So let's move on now to um, the next agenda item. That's programming and Camp Nonatuck. So Camp Nonatuck's full. Um, we're starting next week. Um, staff did CPR, first aid, orientation, all that stuff this week. Um, we're um, excited to have um, campers back. We are at a basically a you know, 40% reduction of, over normal numbers. Um, but um, we're um, looking forward to it. So that's uh, on the on the programming piece. Um, one thing I want to let you guys know is that the Campbell dedication is um, Saturday. And they asked if... Um, any commissioners would like to be there for it? And I believe Bob, um, I think Sam mentioned it to you, but we didn't have a timeline from them. I actually have a timeline of events um, for that day. So if anybody would like to attend um, the event on Saturday, um, 
either let me know now or call the office tomorrow and I can give you, it starts at two o'clock um, and they're going to have speakers and they're going to do the, the fountain dedication and things like that. So if anybody would like to attend, please let me know and I will get that list to um, Joe and um, Jay Grant, I think are the two that are um, planning the festivities for the day, but at least I know Joe is. Cool. I'll be there, John. You'll be there? Yeah. Right. I'll come as well. You'll be there? All right. And I won't be able to make it. So just right. Bob, Bob, you're all set for being there, right? Oh, uh, if you Saturday. want me, I'll be there. Yeah, they want you there. Okay. <laughs> you're a very popular guy. <laughs> All right, I'll give them that list. Campbell. And then I will I'll forward um I wrote it down. Okay. Eric and Paul, I'll forward you the the timeline I got from Joe, just so you have the whole day of events. Um and then Bob, I'll have a copy for you in the office tomorrow. Um that Sam will get to you. Great. Thank you. Um, All right. All right. So let's go on to the next item. We've got budget for 2021-2022. Okay. So under um, there's just a couple of I'm things sorry, here. Can we, can we stay on Camp Nonisic a minute? Sure. You know, this is just my opinion, but I, I honestly feel we should open up Camp Nonisic full because all the schools are open. The kids are, are all together. You know, being outside and everything, I can't imagine that we're going to have that many problems or whatever. And I just feel like we really should have the whole whole thing open, you know, all the uh, different, each camp open for the amount of kids that we used to have. Ron, if we did that, we'd be, in, we'd be in violation of the state. We don't have enough staff to open. Oh, is that the problem? We have hired every single person that's walked through the door. We've overstaffed for what we have, um, but yeah, there's there, we don't have enough staff that would actually if we, we could we would not be able to open up fully this year if we tried to. All right. And the state has camp guidelines that are much different than than what you're seeing. Camp guidelines are 25 kids per building, and we have four pavilions, so we can technically take a hundred total. We have taken 80. Um, so there, there's when you see when you see that the state opened up the, you know, everything else. They didn't do that for camps. It is a to camps are under probably stricter guidelines than schools were. Um, even though, you know, we think we're at the end of COVID. It is. It, it's a lot a lot that they're still requesting and that we have to follow through on. Okay, I tried. <laughs> There's an answer to it. I'm sure. Would you want to take 20 more kids? Um, not at this point, no. I talked to Sam, we might open up the five additional spots per pavilion um, as we get going, but not in the first week, um, maybe week or two. Um, we have a lot of new counselors. Like I said, we, we pretty much hired everybody that came through the door. Um, I have four returning counselors, um, including our camp director. Actually, it's his first year as camp director. Um, he would have been camp director last year. Um, so even a new camp director. So I am comfortable where we're at. Um, and if, if I feel that, um, we're in good shape. We will consider it, but definitely not for the first week or two. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to uh, the budget. So we're closing out budget. Um, we're we're spending as we we can. Ending. Um, you know, we were able to get some things taken care of. Um, the fencing at the the basketball courts that was um, damaged um, during the winter, um, the electrical service that needed to be re that moved down at the pool. Um, so those are some of the big ticket items that we were able to um, get done um, on this year. Um, 
next year's budget. We had our um, city council meeting last week. That's why we had to postpone this meeting for a week. Um, everything went fine there. Our budgets are approved as presented. Um, no questions of what we had. Um, so we were, we were okay on that. Um, the only thing uh, that I would like um, to discuss is um, under the in cemetery, um, their old John Deere is, is, is kind of running like a dog and um, occasionally it's, well, occasionally it's down and it's down for a bit. They've, they've exhausted um, many hours and um, problem solving um, to get at it. And it's, it's just, I actually have the same problem with my John Deere at home. It just kind of gets clogged out and just dies. Um, so I had the cemetery foreman get some pricing on a, a zero turn like they currently have over there. Um, and they're about just under $8,700 for a zero turn. We have about $57,000 in our perpetual care. Um, the perpetual care, we've, we've used this for purchasing lawnmower in the past, the tractor they have over there. Um, the road work that was done was used with perpetual care, well, partially, partially by the city. Um, so we have money. Um, we're still selling lots. Things are good. I think um, I'd like to recommend that um, we purchase a new zero turn so they have two um, reliable pieces of equipment over there um, to, to handle what they, what they do. Um, they also will, um, when they go out to do E Street, they'll go hit a couple of our pocket parks um, with their equipment as well, um, you know, for us when they're, when they're out that way. So um, I think it's a much needed piece. I think the John Deere, I believe is 17 years old over there. Um, so it's, it's, it's done them well, <laughs> you know, we're replacing a 17 year old, um, lawnmower. Um, and it's a high residential grade. Um, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not industrial. Um, and to get mat to mow that much with it for that long, um, there's no apologies for that, John Deere. It, it did as well. And look at that. We I just had a moment of, of silence for the they... John Deere. <laughs> I was on the cemetery commission when we ordered that. And I'll never forget, they had a commercial one and then a residential one. And like it was maybe $900 difference or something, I forget. But one of the members goes, well, I make a motion we get the, the residential one. And everybody said, well, geez, it's not going to last this long or anything else. And I said, I think we should get the commercial. Well, he jumped on my throat saying, you can't spend money for the town like that. You know, you got to get lesser things so you can. I said, but we're going to be you know, sending it out for repair all the time. But it lasted, what, 17 years, you said? Yeah, and, and trust me, it went through a lot of repairs. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a, a healthy 17 years, but, you know, when we had, um, you know, George in the wintertime, um, you know, going over everything, and I think that's a credit to um, the staff of going in and going through every piece of equipment um, in the winter time when, when George and, um, and previously Floyd, but, um, George and Dan, that they, they would go through repainting parts, you know, replacing parts, you know, getting things ready. And we, it wasn't, you know, run it to the dies and then throw it out. It, that's not our mentality. Um, so it, it, it def definitely lasted long and it was, a, it was a definitely a credit to the staff to, to make it last that long and put the effort in to try to do the repairs and in, in, in house and and um, you know it has been sent out on a on a couple of occasions lately, um, but that's you know still hasn't solved the problem. All right. So is that part of the capital like improvement plan, or is that something? That no. So usually with um, 
the um, cemetery because they have the perpetual perpetual care pays for uh, for their things over there. Right. That's what the perpetual care money is for is to, to for upkeep and, and maintenance and equipment to, um, to do that. Yeah. I mean, we have, I think the last one we did, a, I had money in there. So I think it was like a 50-50 split that I was able to get with the city. But this time there's, I don't have the extra money in the cemetery um, budget to, to get something like that done. So you're looking for a motion to purchase a new mower? Yeah, it would have to come out of um, perpetual care. So it, it, um, I believe a motion by the, the commission is the best way to do it. Um, you know, some of the other purchases that we do um, is not a big deal, but when it comes out of a separate pot and out of the city budget and the perpetual care, I think it's best to have the commission um, vote to approve that. Do you know what it's going to cost? 8700 bucks. Eight six eight six forty. I'd like uh, to make a motion um, to spend eight eight thousand six hundred forty six dollars eighty six from perpetual care to purchase a new zero turn radius mower for the cemetery crew. I'll second it. I'll not third it. <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> Too late, Bob. You're four for five today. <laughs> Okay, so on the motion to purchase the new mower, uh, we'll start with you, Bob. Yep. Eric? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Andy? Yes. Jim? Aye. Uh, yep. And Ron? Yep. All right. Uh, unanimously in favor. Great. And then the other thing on budgets is... Um, I have three interviews tomorrow um, for a maintenance position for our 40 hour um, pay plan position. Um, so hopefully um, that first week of July, like July 6th, um, we can welcome someone aboard to help fill um, the 40 hour slot that has been lacking since um, January 1, basically. Um, so um, Hopefully it turns out well and we can get someone else in here. Um, and that person will be working weekends as well as during the week. So to get help us um, meet the, the needs of our weekend guests. Um, so, um, but like I said, we probably hope that first week of July, hopefully we have someone in place for. John, is there any way we can put like one of those boards we got? saying, you know, help wanted lifeguards and a worker down by the pond like we do for for uh, concerts and stuff? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd have to check with personnel, but I don't think they would mind if we put, you know, cities looking for help or, you know, put in, right. you know check into easthamptonma.gov and check our job postings out because we have quite a few of them. Isn't there one already right there by the bank? Is there? Yeah, I think there is. I think I saw one. I thought there was, or there used to be. Maybe I, right when you go around the the rotary. The rotary. Yep. I thought there was something there that said something about positions. I I saw it too. Okay. I went around there. I didn't see it. It was one of those like a roadside thing, if I remember right. But it could be gone. I I, I have you know I do have my senior moments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check on that. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean we've we've spread the word um, pretty much any way you could possibly spread it. Um, and, and it's, and, you know, you talk to personnel, it's not just our department that they're not seeing people apply for. It's, it's um, many positions throughout the city that, um, and not just us. I mean, you go from, you know, the Berkshires to Cape Cod and there's a, you know, they talk about lifeguard shortages and um, restaurant shortages and, you know, there's restaurants giving thousand dollar sign on bonuses to be wait staff and things like that. It's just um, it's a real problem right now um, of getting folks um, into positions like that um, that are in need, desperate need. Um, we had a hey John, we had a we had a job fair at our place. No one showed up. Three hours, people were out front. 
Nobody stopped him. It's, it's yeah. Hopefully really we get very encouraging. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. Um, so with lifeguard shortage, um, right now the pool is scheduled not to be open. We had we've had one lifeguard apply, one pool manager, and like five cashiers um, that that don't have any lifeguard experience. Um, so we. Um, it's going to take, it takes eight to 10 days to, to get the pool up and going. And we haven't even um, bothered to fill it for, there's no reason um, to waste chemicals and everything else. Um, what we have been doing is we purchased um, a joint sealer for the, for the bottom of the pool. Um, so we are going to keep working at the pool um, filling those joints um, that are vertical and um, horizontal. Um, they're doing vertical for it first. Um, and then we're going to attack the horizontal. So getting a professional grade um, crack sealer that's made for pools and cracks for um, concrete pools. And, and then we're also going to... Um, we're planning on painting the pool in the fall um, this year, so it doesn't need it for next year. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate um, where we're at with with the pool, but um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's just a we've we've contacted three lifeguard trainers um, that certify lifeguards given them our job posting and have gotten zero response um for for jobs um you know so that's where we're at with that so as of right now the pool is not opening um unless we get an influx um you know and then it would take us you know about a week to to turn it around to get it up and going um so we'll see where we're at with that um the spray park is not open as of yet, and that's um, because of an issue with Eversource um, and the utility poles that were snapped. Um, Whiteley came in three weeks ago, um, did the work that Eversource wanted done, and they. I reached out to our engineer um, four times, uh, unsuccessfully, did not respond to me one time um, to discuss this. I went to his boss and his boss's bosses, and uh, yesterday at 6.50 in the morning, I got a call and um, started the ball rolling with someone new who is, was getting an engineer out. I sent him pictures and um, putting the work order in place. Um, so hopefully um, we hear something the next day or two about um, when they're coming out. Um, to solve the issue for camp because the pool is a big part of camp um we are having party patrol um come in with water slides and inflatables um so the kids will be able to still enjoy um, those types of things and then the the staff is um, preparing a lot of water games and things like that um that the kids really enjoy so um you know, we're, we're making do, um, with a bad situation. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing how, how, uh, hard we tried and, and, and the shortage just in general of just labor, not just lifeguards. So, so John, I, 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 I'll, all of that sounds great. And it sounds like you all are doing a, a great job of, right. of, I mean, you, you have, you, the pool is such a major part, and so doing, you know, having party patrol come in for the for a summer camp, that's 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 awesome. I'm wondering, and I like I understand like the lifeguard shortage isn't is not an East Hampton specific thing. It's you know it's across the state, it's across the country. Um, I was curious, you know, I was it was it sort of a light bulb went off in my head, and this is it probably isn't a question for us here. This is probably one for the mayor and for just going forward down the line. So the article that was in the Gazette. You know that you were quoted in, and folks, the uh, the gentleman from Northampton was quoted in. Totally laid it out very clearly for everyone. There was a letter to the editor from a lifeguard in Northampton a couple of days later, 
that explained, you know, if you're going to be a lifeguard, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of your own money out of pocket for certification. And then it's about 30 hours of training out of your own time before you're certified as a lifeguard. I'm wondering if like the city is committed to having pool and having aquatics be a part of the recreational future, if that's something, I mean, asking, you know, asking someone to basically give an hour of work for free just to get certified. I'm wondering if that's something like sort of bigger picture that the city could think about. This, is, this, um, is, this goes way beyond my pay grade in this, in this discussion right here, but just it's a something. No, to think but about. We've, we've actually done that. So we, oh, okay. we, We've gone to the high school and we give them, we send something out that says, if you take the lifeguard certification course and you complete your service with Parks and Rec, at the end of the year, we reimburse you oh, for perfect. your lifeguard certification. Okay. Please yeah, so strike, we, strike everything that I just said, Andy. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we did that. We had a lot of success with that. Um, and it was good because... You know, you can't pay them up front. It was a promissory note, basically. You know, you yep. give us a good year, and we're gonna we're gonna pay. So we did that for a couple of years when we were in our lifeguard shortage. Um, this year, we weren't sure if we were having a pool from the get up. So we yeah. didn't we didn't we we started advertising in March for lifeguards, even though we still weren't sure if we were gonna have it. But we didn't get the the push out. Sam did Facebook. And we had one taker on it, um, but they're like, well, the, is your pool going to open? And it's like, well, we're not sure because you're the only person so far that's, that's that's a taker on. We have one lifeguard and then one potential. He wasn't certified. Um, so, yeah, that's something that we, we have done in the past, and um, we are all for doing it in the future to – to because uh, to, I agree, it, you know, you're – you're you're there it's a very expensive class to take um so reimbursing them for it and and getting a job training um and getting them working for us um was a win-win so uh yep we're all about that and awesome next year we'll be back around in january sending it right out early and getting in lifeguard training and 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 getting them set up um for that great in years past, we used to have uh, swimming lessons, and then we also had, uh, you know, I think it was like training we'd have, and we'd have cards like first class or, you know, different cards, and you worked your way up to a lifeguard if you wanted. And that used to work out pretty good because you were feeding your own system. Yeah. You know, by having that. That's where, you know, swimming team and everything else. But anyways... Uh, yeah, we got to do something to get somebody in there. I think Bob should become a lifeguard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can just hear him saying, you're out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Ron, if you need a second on that, I can. A second. I... <laughs> was it actually a motion, though, or I was just... <laughs> Yeah, it was a motion to get Bob to be a lifeguard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> he does like to sit and talk, though. Um, so we're going to, you know, we haven't posted anything down there, um, but we're going to be posting, you know, closed due to lifeguard shortage, you know, hope to be open this summer. I think there's kind of a... a a deadline, I would say, probably around that July 10th, that it's just not going to be worth it by the time you get it up and going. You're going to have a pool for five weeks, um, you know, because there is so much that goes into it, um, getting it prepared. So, um, but we're, I mean, we, we, all the jobs are still posted. I mean, we're, we, we haven't given up on it um, for sure. Um, Field fees and policies. Um, I put that in the packet as well. You can see the the red numbers are um, changes. This has been we're uh, six years in on these these prices. Um, you know the amount of work that the guys do. Um, 
the ball fields ready, especially on weekends when they're trying to get other stuff going. Um, and to hear the the cages rattle about how everybody wants to come to our fields um, tells me either um, we were too low on our cost per field. Um, and apparently we got the, some of the nicest fields around. Um, so um, I, I thought it was an opportune time to look at our price structure. We missed last year. Um, we didn't take in any revenue um, on field rentals. And we, we use that, that money goes back into the fields. Um, you know, we, we spent eight grand, eight to 10 grand um, on daily field out of our own revolving account um, based on, um, you know, what we took in for field rental fees for, you know, we had a stockpile for a few years, um, but, you know, we do take that money and we do put it back into, um, you know, the, the maintenance and, and, um, you know, just the, the sod and, and the, the bases and the, um, pitchers mounds, things like that, that people don't even think about that are, that cost so much money, um, to purchase. And then you got to put them in concrete and, and cement them and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, so I'm recommending, um, a slight increase, um, for, for, um, field usage fees. Anybody has any discussions or concerns? How much were you going to go up to? Um, so adult league goes from sixty dollars to eighty dollars. Youth league goes from forty to fifty. Um, for non-resident, and then for resident of fifty percent or more, it goes from twenty-five to thirty-five. So 20 for adults, 10 for a, um, a youth high school level game. Hmm. Just wonder if more people will be back to work by then to have money to go pay for this. Well, I, I, think, I think they have no problem paying for it because they're already paying other um, communities and facilities. Um, more than what we do. You mean they might have to take something out of the extra 300 they're getting a week? Oh my God. So this was, these new rates would be less than nearby than other communities in the area? Yes. Well, they're comparable or less, yes. They're, they're in the, the general range um, of what other communities are charging. Um, and there's not a lot, there's not a lot of good field space, um, in, you know, not to, you know, make our park and field sound like they're the best thing in the world, but, you know, it costs a lot of money to, to keep what we have going. Um, and we don't take, a, we don't take any money really out of our city budget towards field maintenance, you know, it's basically paid for, um, through field fees. So, um, you know, to, to keep up with what we have, um, you know, is a lot of man hours, but it, there's a lot of, um, financial costs as well that goes into it. Yeah. I mean, and not a tuck park has the best ball fields in the area and no one else comes close. Like, let's just, let's, let's, let's not tiptoe around us, you know, and, you know, Bob, you've been involved in hardball for how long? And you've been to how many communities? You can vouch for this. I mean, our, the fields at the park are pristine and, you know, uh, you could say you get what you pay for. Um, but like, you're not, it's not even, I don't even think you're jacking it up. I think it's a completely reasonable uh, after, you know, seven years to ask, you know, folks to contribute a little more. I, I'm totally, I think it's totally fine. Would you like to raise it more than this? Not at this time. Not at this time. We'll re we can revisit in a couple of years or whatever. Um, you know, I don't want to give 
I don't want to get you know too carried away, but I I, I just I think we what we have and 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 Eric summed it up pretty well there. You know, is we have Premier Fields um, and you know just just the amount of work that Jeff did alone today on the baseball field, the daily field and she and field to get ready for a district game. I mean, he literally spent eight hours um, preparing two fields. I know we had vandalism, so that was a little more on daily. Um, and, but I mean, it, there's a ton of work that goes into these fields and, and um, you know, and when we get outside groups um, that are, are, um, you know, not part of our taxpayer base um, that we, that we hold, you know, our, our little league and and um, high school sports, you know, they get they don't get charged for for these fields. So, uh, you know, we try to limit the amount of outside use. But if you are going to come in for outside use, um, you know, there is going to be a cost, and, and it's something that has to be where we can use that money to reinvest into into the fields. All right. Does anybody feel uh, strongly in, in opposition to this? Like, are there any other points here? Or are we going to be looking for a motion? Do I have to do it again? I'll do it again. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the uh, increase in uh, field usage fees as outlined on the document that uh, John shared with the commission. All second. All third. <laughs> okay, uh, so motion to adjust the field usage fees. Um, we'll start with you, Bob. Oh, I agree. Okay. Eric? I agree as well. Andy? Yes. Jim? Aye. And Ron? Yes. Great. We are unanimous again. So park and rec COVID-19 restrictions, pretty much everything has been lifted by the city and the state um, regarding that. So, um, you know, the only thing we're really holding on to is that July 10th of complete reopening at 100% um, for pavilion capacity, non-residents and everything. So um, I just threw that on there as a kind of reminder that um, the end is somewhat near and um, you know we're we're going to be in um, full operating capacity um, as best we can. Hallelujah. Okay. <coughs> the last item is old and continuing business. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? I got one thing that bugs me, and it's down at the entrance of the cemetery. These cars are parking on the right side, and some go up like two and a half car lengths, and they're yep. just going to wear that grass out. And I'd asked before about putting signs up saying don't park on this side or something, but you go there, there and there's three, three or four cars parked into the grass. So Isn't there no parking yep. sign over there? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I think it's on the pond side. Well, the pond side, they ruined that already, so I figured they got to park. Yeah. Yeah, so it's on the pond the side, it says wow. no parking, and the car's parked right next to it. There's a no parking sign go. three quarters of the way down on the left. To what? To the, to, towards the pond, yeah. Like well, I'm I talking about go. the right side yeah, where the no, different cars are. Hill. There's They're wearing other. down the roots and everything else. They're on the hill. We'll have the guys kind of put um, some like tomato steak signs or something in that area. Yeah. But they're going to park right next to it. Yeah. Like on the other side. He's right. Well, then we shouldn't even put the signs up there. We'll put them up. Might, might have, might, um, decur, decur. 
It's more good people. It's more. All right. If that, I got nothing else. That's it. How about how's the anything new on Plain and Strong? Any any new business up there? Nope. Any uh, damages or not that we were aware of? They're pretty good about letting us know. And I guess people were, people, you know, social media people were going crazy about how come we're not charging. They were complaining about free entry to the park. <laughs> it was hilarious. So sometimes we, when we charge, they don't like it, but when we don't charge, they don't like it. Yeah, they were complaining about there's no, how come they're not charging? I'll tell them we'll charge them. Yeah. Right. They can pick uh, up the slack just like they can pay extra on their tax taxes. Well, one of the main reasons is we're not going to be having full services. Um, oh, yeah. I get it, but, you know, it's funny. And, you know, it's like, and, and the other reason is people have been through enough. Um, so giving folks a $3 break um, to come into yeah. the park and enjoy some, some green space and um, – you know, it's not like we're giving away pavilions and picnics. They're still paying for that. But. I know. Yeah. It, just, it was just it was like, really, people? <laughs> we'll get them next year. Yeah. We're real you good. Know, you respond to every single one and get their addresses. We're going to double up on them next year. <laughs> uh, I, think Sam, I think Sam's on it. <laughs> oh, you sounded like a Bruins fan there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them next year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, if I could, I I just want to jump in for a second. I don't know if anybody caught any flack or there were any issues that uh, those of you. I, I'm the uh, representative of the CPA, and last week we had a discussion regarding uh, bringing people in to review housing for affordable housing in in, in uh, East Hampton. And I know part of it was looking at the schools and their other sites. Um, and on the vote, I abstained from the vote and, it, and I, it reflects badly on the committee. I apologize, but I just want to tell you the main reason I did it was I wasn't, I'm not really up to date on what exactly all that is about. And I wasn't really comfortable um, voting on something that I didn't completely understand. I kind of felt a little bit like the whole process was a little bit rushed. Uh, normally when we commit uh, monies for things, it, it, it's a couple of meetings. It was all kind of wanted to be done at one. It was kind of a, uh, a little bit quicker than I had expected. So if it reflects on anybody, anybody catches anything for it, by all means, it, that was on me. It was a personal decision, nothing to do with uh, any of you guys. So. I just yeah, want that. No, okay. sure. I agree with that. If you're not fully prepared to understand what you're voting on, then I think you did the right thing. So I just want, if anybody gets any flack, though, I just want to let you know that's that's the reason behind it. I just kind of felt like it was a little quick for me. That's all. And what your telephone been? number is? 413-977-2449. Uh, <laughs> no problem. I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> what were they voting to spend money on? Uh, it was a review of uh, the... Uh, reduced housing, uh, affordable housing. And part of it was the deal with looking at the two schools that are going to be emptied. And then there, I think there were a couple other sites. Um, and they had, a lady came in and did a presentation regarding what they were going to do. Um, and I just, again, I, I didn't completely get it. I, and I wasn't really comfortable. I have no problem with, a, with affordable housing. That wasn't the thing. It was just how, how quickly it got all presented. Um, and I'm sure the woman, the, the lady that did a really good job, but I just, again, uh, I didn't even know quite, at, quite frankly what the right questions were for me to answer or ask her. So I, when the vote came through, I abstained and said, excuse me, I just don't feel qualified to be actually voting on this. So that's my reasoning. So I just want to let you guys know that's why I did it. And if there's an issue, it's on me. It's not on you guys. Fair enough. Thank you. 
you know, and Andy, and, and you know, also just want to throw out the offer in the future for CPA meetings. If there's ever meetings in the future where you need, you, where you just would look, not need, because I know you 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 hand you handle and represent us quite well. But if you'd like other members of the commission to join you for support, we you know we'd be more than happy to. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I know that there's going to be a school reuse, a new committee formed later in the summer. At least that's, I heard that recently. Um, I don't know if a parks commission member would be a part of that or not. Um, but I know that there is quite a bit of discussion as far as what those buildings can be used for and what's going to be useful for the community. Um, I understand in particular, you know, Pepin School is going to be um, you know, an important conversation to have because, you know, the the different things that go on there, um, you know, and the asset that that building is to the city, especially, you know, in regards, I know, like the East Hampton basketball and such is going to have to be, uh, it's going to have to be looked at because if we do lose that building, then uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. All right, is there any other uh, business, any old business or continuing business anybody would like to, to bring up? Anything new? Um, just one thing, um, I got a note from um, the uh, mayor's office today that the next meeting will be, as of this point, it's still gonna be Zoom. There'll be no, they're not planning any in-person meetings in July um, until the state comes out with the hybrid um, technology where you can have us sitting in a, you know, at the pavilion and having um, internet access where folks can zoom in to our meeting and we can see them back or whatever. So they're, so next meeting is still will be considered a um, zoom meeting for July is what I, and, and then, maybe a change in policy for August, but they said plan for July Zoom meetings. So How are they going to do a cookout then online? Um, <laughs> I'm going to have Grubhub sent to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that gets in the minutes. <laughs> 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 so I want validation next month. We've all that we non committed to Grubhub. No, I can't, um, I'm gonna, I I'll think commit I the it. box. I'll commit the box lunches where you come through and pick it up and then go home. <laughs> Does Eric have to make a motion? Because he's been really he's really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, That's folks. it for me. Yeah. Good. Well, if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, um, before I do, though, <clears throat> I don't know if John has told you guys, but I've sent him my resignation uh, as of July 1st. You know, I'm going to be 75 next month, but I just want to do something. My sister just died of COVID a couple months ago and made you think a lot, and I just want to do some other type of of stuff for the town or whatever and so and also i think i mentioned to him like some of you younger guys have come in and you've shown the energy and and the curiosity to get things done and all and it reminds me of my old self but i just uh really want to say i just truly enjoyed working with you guys and uh i wish you all the luck in the future here and i I think I said in my resignation, the town is in good hands with you guys. So I enjoyed working with you. And my even me. Well, let's not well second thought, Jim. Okay. <laughs> you know, when you show up on time, it is. But um, Ron, how long have you been on the commission for? I I first started working for the park department in 1988, and you were on the commission. <laughs> right. I, I I think somewhere around 35 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I have paperwork I was looking at, and, and Ron was 86, 87, was on some paperwork for the Cemetery Commission at that point. 
Um, yeah. There's some deeds that were signed and his name was on it. So, yeah, we, we kind of estimated probably about 35 years. Um, he was, you he know, was on there with Sarge and... I do, you know, I, was for a while. To it. I think it was his his point to, to announce his own um, departure from the commission. But I also told him that when we have our first in-person meeting, um, whether it's, you know, doesn't look like July now, it looks like probably August where we can get together. Um, we will have a little um, cookout before our meeting and, um, and, and give Ron our well wishes in person and, and his thanks for, for everything he's done for the park and, rec and cemetery for 35 plus years. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, he's been a huge asset. Um, you know, he's, he's a, he was, he's a commissioner that was always there. He was always a phone call away or a text message, um, and was always available to discuss things with. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a it's a sad day, um, for the, for the commission and the department, uh, um, you know, he, he deserves to have, uh, some golden years away from the commission and having people ask him, why is this going on? And why is this not going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, Ron, thank you so much for all your service. Well, yeah. I appreciate your comments and everything. And like I say, I enjoyed working with you guys and, uh, it's been fun most of the time and uh, <laughs> times it wasn't, but uh, again, it's, it's been a pleasure and I wish you guys all the luck there is. Thank oh. you so much, Ron. So sorry. All right. You're going to go, but I guess happy. Good for you. In 35 years. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it before you longer, I don't know. I was going to see if Sam could find out, but I was on the cemetery commission two years first. And then went on the park and rec. So before your motion to adjourn, Ron, I, I guess I'd like yep. to make a motion on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Commission saying, uh, formally thanking you, thanking Ron Hillpole for 35 plus years of, of incredible, tremendous service to the community of East Hampton, to the city and its parks, and uh, from a, a grateful commission and a grateful community. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I see Eat a park a bench in your future. <laughs> uh, see a what? A park bench in your future. <laughs> <laughs> I want a lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, are you going to second this one? I'm going to absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and, and don't let Bob go because he said he's taking his field with him if he goes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not letting Bob go. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, Ron. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so see you for the cookout. Let's do this, make it official. Motion on the floor. We'll start with you, Bob. Well, we need a second for the closing the mission, uh, closing the meeting. Oh, we're going to vote on, um, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Sorry. The other motion. Sorry. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. So we got a yes from Bob. Eric? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Andrew? Yes. Uh, Jim? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you should abstain, Jim. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so I said four kids ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. oh, wait, wrong word. And you, Ron, do you uh, vote to thank yourself, I suppose? No. <laughs> I don't think I'd have to thank myself, would I? Just put, you get it. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Great. It's unanimous. You're well thanked. Oh, man. And the other one was to close the meeting, right? Closing the yeah. meeting, yes. Oh, that's Ron. Yeah, I All right, make motion. motion. We need a second. Second. I, I knew you were coming through, double boy. <laughs> All right. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> okay, so motion to adjourn. Please. Again, we'll start with you, Bob. Yes. Eric? Yes. Yes. Andrew? Yes, sir. Jim? Yay. And Ron? Yes. And okay. Tampa Bay just went, just went ahead two to one. Oh, nice. All right, folks. Uh, thank you all so much. Oh, we're going to have the Red Sox. Let's have a hockey.
All right, and uh, all right. I'll talk to all you folks later. Thank you, guys. All right. yeah. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you. Bye now.